All right, let's dissect an eye. So when you look at the cow's eye, it almost looks like this could be any part of the cow's body. Um, so if your eye arrives looking like this with all this extra tissue, just know that the eye is inside all of that tissue. I can see the cornea of the eye right there. But before we start looking at the eyeball itself, let's talk about all of this excess tissue. There are two main types of tissue found on the outside of the cow's eye. The first type of tissue I wanna talk about kind of looks like a marbled steak. And the reason it looks like steak is because steak is the muscle of the cow and this is a muscle of the cow as well. This is a skeletal muscle, which means the cow had control over when the skeletal muscle contracted and relaxed. And this specific skeletal muscle that we have around our eyes as well is known as the extraocular muscles, which really just means muscles on the outside of the eye. These Voluntary muscles are responsible for moving your eyeball within the socket. So when you look left to look at the person next to you without moving your head, or you look right to give someone some side eye, or you look up or you look down, you are contracting and relaxing your extra ocular muscles. And there's a number of them surrounding the eyeball and they all work in sync to give you a nice wide range of motion of which way your eye can look. Another type of tissue that's pretty easy to see on the outside of the eye is this white tissue. And if you've dissected before, this probably looks very familiar because it surrounds a lot of our important organs and it cushions those organs. This is fat tissue or adipose tissue. So when the cow's eye was inside the orbit or inside the socket, there was more fat tissue surrounding it and that fat tissue cushioned it in case there was some sort of movement happening near the head of the cow where the eye need cushioned within the socket. Because there is so much extra adipose tissue and muscle tissue, I'm going to do something you might not have to do. Before we look at the cornea of the eye, I am going to cut a good bit of this fat tissue and muscle tissue off so that we can really see the cornea. And like I've been mentioning, this structure that you are looking at right here that is the cornea of the cow's eye or the front of the cow's eye. It's almost like a window into the cow's eye. And so behind the cornea, there's the pupil and I can feel the lens in there. So this is the front of the cow's eye. When the cow was alive, the cornea was much more clear, but because this eye has been preserved, preservation changes the color of the cornea, so it does have a more cloudy appearance now. And the reason why it needs to be clear or transparent is this is what all of the light entering your eye comes through. Now the cornea has two jobs. The first job is that you can see it is pretty tough. I can push on it and there really doesn't feel like there's any risk of my forceps popping through the cornea. So this membrane protects the eye from dust and dirt and pathogens and keeps all of those substance out from the deeper portions of the eye that we'll see later today. The second function of the cornea is that it bends or refracts light. So as light comes shooting towards your eye, the cornea bends that light, whichever way the light needs to go to help your eye see more clearly. And ultimately, this bending of light allows you to see things close up or allows you to see things far away. So if you struggle with nearsightedness or farsightedness, the culprit of that is the cornea. The cornea is usually just a curved surface. So your cornea might be too curved or not curved enough. If I flip the eye over on the back of the eye, there's a lot of adipose tissue and more of those extraocular muscles but I see this interesting structure right here. And it just looks like a totally different substance than the adipose tissue, and that's because it is. It's not fat tissue at all. In fact, it's a bundle of nerve fibers. This is the optic nerve. So when the cow has its eyeball inside its head, the optic nerve connects the eyeball to the brain of the cow. And any light information that comes in the eye travels through the eye and at the optic nerve, that light information is able to be passed to the brain. So I know we always say that our eyes are where visions occur and our eyes are where we see things, but really 
our eyes just gather light information. And as that light information gets sent as electrical messages through the optic nerve to our brain, it is our brain that forms the visions and puts that light information together into a meaningful vision in our head. Now, I removed a lot of adipose tissue and of those extraocular muscle muscles, but I did not remove all of them. And in order to see our next structure, which is the white of the eye, you can kind of see a bit here, also known as the sclera, I am going to need to remove all of this extra adipose tissue and extraocular muscle. So you can just go back and watch as I do that, and then we'll regroup and we'll look at some of the sclera. If you are going to dissect with this video, two things I would recommend when you are removing the adipose tissue and muscle off of the sclera is number one, if you see any fluid leaking, it means you've gone too deep. So you don't wanna ever cut into the sclera itself and look at this. I mean, it's a pretty hard membrane that has a totally different consistency than adipose tissue, which is very loose and muscle, which is a little bit more flimsy too has. So you really shouldn't be cutting through this hard membrane at all. The second piece of advice I have for you is that you don't want to remove the optic nerve. If it happens, it's not a huge deal, but it is nice to keep that structure intact. So the sclera is not here. This is our cornea, remember. But the sclera is basically everything else that we see. And that is the white of your eye. Um, preservation, like I said earlier, changes the color of tissue. So this doesn't look very white to me. But if I zoom in a little bit, it kind of does look like it has similar structure to the white of your eye with maybe some blood vessels crossing over it. And the sclera, like I mentioned, is pretty hard. So this um, fibrous tough membrane just surrounds the eye and helps to maintain the structure of the eye and to keep the eye uh, the shape that it should be.